G'day Spurs fans, Paul the Hotspur Hippie here. We are victorious folks. Tottenham Hotspur 3, Crystal Palace 1. And I think that was a game to shut quite a few people up there. I like to think of this game as plan A 3, plan B 1. That's right. I will have a look around the football punditry sphere and the Spurs sphere. And what I want to see is, I want to see a load of people saying, oh look. Crystal Palace tried a plan B. They tried game management. They tried time wasting. They tried seeing out a 1-0 uh, margin. And it didn't work. Will I hear that? Can I hear that anywhere? No. No. The confirmation bias of boring game management continues, folks. Whereas Tottenham Hotspur, I was so happy with that performance last night. I'm going to be happy all week. We played plan A to the whistle. 2-1 up, what happens? Do we like, you know, protect the lead? No, we go 3-1 up. That is the way you put football games to bed. It's hard, it's tricky, it doesn't always come off, but it's the way to do it. And the only way to do it is to practice it. When you practice it, you get better and you get a game last night. Crystal Palace didn't turn up. And I've got to be thinking that Crystal Palace are better than that. Um, they're, they're not that bad a team. But they were last night with the tactics. With the tactics, they, they were terrible. Terrible. Um, they, they, they parked the bus and you know what? I was happy with our performance. Very happy with our performance. First half, where, where we went wrong in the first half as opposed to the second, this is my view on it really the only thing because I thought we still played really well in the first half it wasn't a question of oh, Tottenham half spur or something like that in the first half our wingers didn't wing uh, Timo Werner uh, when he was running down the line would always pass back or not always most of the time pass back to a doggy Kulu didn't really get the ball in from the from the right hand side so that was where we let where 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 we where we didn't generate those chances because Sun, the only time he got the ball, I think, was when he hit the post. He got a ball from Kulu, first time whack, unlucky not to score off the post. Uh, but when the ball comes in the middle, Sun's devastating, as we'll find out a bit later. So really, I think that was the only kind of um, flaw uh, in our in our first half performance. I thought. We looked much, much, much more inventive than we did uh, in, in our, than our last game, where we were kind of static, not moving off the ball. Uh, we were doing that. We were doing that. The, the, the horseshoe wasn't happening. The horseshoe wasn't happening. Even though the wingers were parking back a little bit, it didn't go all the way to, to start doing that. I, I've heard um, Sean Butler on Spurs talk show talk about this horseshoe. And I agree with him. I, I just can't stand it. It just, you know, it means you run out of ideas, doesn't it? That wasn't happening last night at Tottenham. It wasn't happening. Crystal Palace put a big blob of players in the middle. So we had to go around the edges. And we didn't really exploit that to, uh, to the full capacity. Uh, but we did generate two good chances. Uh, Sun hit the post, which would have been an amazing goal. <laughs> and Timo Werner, one-on-one uh, -on -one with the keeper. Didn't make a complete arse of it. The keeper did very well, Johnston, who got a yellow card later on in the game for time management, game game management bollocks. Um, Timo Werner um, didn't get the uh, didn't get the one on one on one. One on ones aren't easy, by the way. But at that stage, I was thinking, oh, come on, man. He, um, uh, towards the end of the second half, I was really getting a bit frustrated with him passing backwards. Uh, a lot of the time, but it wasn't catastrophic. It wasn't like Werner was rubbish, uh, was you know tripping over his feet or anything like that. It was just um, his uh, his last decision when he was getting towards their goal wasn't always correct. But not a hard thing to correct. I don't think the players would have needed much of a talking to at half time because I think we did really well. I think we defended excellently. Mickey van der Ven just. Um, he, he gets better and better at that guy. He's like a genetically engineered super soldier. The perfect defender, man. And not only is he a perfect defender, he's a really great footballer as well. 
he, you know, I was, I, I was, I did a watch along last night, and when I was watching Van der Ven at times, even though their builds are quite different, he, he, he reminded me a bit of a, of a Graham Roberts. Graham Roberts was a, was a centre half that was a great centre half, but when he felt like it, or when the opportunity was there, when, when, when the game opened up, he could take the ball up the other end, take the other upper, other a ball up the other end, go dance past players, even score a goal. So, Van der Ven is in that kind of mould, except. I think he's a bit quicker than old, the old Robbo. Um, amazing. I like the way that our defenders were backing each other up. There was a point where uh, Romero, I think it was, had a bit of a fluffy cock up. But who covered it up for him? It was Emerson Royale. Now, Royale, I might almost have to take him off my list of my famous five, being Hoiberg, Skip, Lo Celso, uh, Ben Davies, and uh, Emerson Royale. Because I suppose if you're looking at like backup squad players, um, Royale did did his job last night, didn't he? Um, I can't think of really too much he did wrong. He was solid, you know what I mean? Solid, not too much flair or anything like that. But he, he did he, he plugged the hole, defended really well actually, defended really well, much better than a Ben Davies in my book. So maybe we'll see, we'll see. Maybe Royale might come off the list of players that I want to upgrade. Uh, but, you know, you're only as good as your last performance. So he's off the list for now. Keep it up, MO. <laughs> My list is important. <laughs> um, so anyway, we came out the second half. Um, no subs were made. We, you know, the, thing, the other thing I liked about the way we were playing, we were trying those little flicks and triangles. And even though sometimes they weren't coming off, we didn't stop trying. We didn't stop trying doing them. And I like that, you know. You don't just give up when, 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 you're, not, when you're not quite getting on it. Uh, because all it takes is a few of those little intricate uh, modes of play to come off and you and you dominate the game and I think that's that's really what we did. we dominated the whole game anyway but as in presence in uh, in the opposition's 18 yard box that really came off in the second half so difference in the second half Werner Werner went up further and started putting balls across that's the only change here to make man and I thought he had a really Really good second half. Really good second half. Um, and then uh, uh, Brennan Johnson on the right-hand side, although he was popping up all over the place, this guy, and he was back defending. And I think he actually got the assist for uh, for uh, Sun's goal as well. So I don't know quite what jo uh, position Johnson was playing. I think on paper it might have been right wing, but it was also a bit left backy as well. <laughs> Johnson was a, was a, was a, had a great game, had an absolute great game. I hope that shuts a few people up as well. You know, I haven't been looking at Tottenham or Spurs or football stuff in the last couple of weeks because I knew the bollocks I'd be hearing. Um, you know, we need to do this, we need to do that, we need to fix this, we need to fix this. The that player's crap, that player's crap. Uh, what do you say now, folks? What do you say now? Um, so our our uh, so. Come back in the second half. Crystal Palace with about their third touch of the uh, game, get a free kick, very well struck free kick, right beyond the uh, the fingertips of uh, Vicario, and then Crystal Palace tried to shut up shop even more. Game management, folks. I'm going to keep banging on this drum. Game management. Palace are better than that, man. It goes to show you, you know, it doesn't. To a certain extent, it doesn't matter what tactic you play. If you're good, you're good at it. And if you're not good, you're not good at it. It doesn't matter if you play defensive or attacking or whatever. If you've got the chops, you can do any of these things well. So I don't know why Palace came out so negatively. They are usually a team that have got a bit of a, a bit of stuff about them. Not last night. So there we go. We were 1-0 down. I'm starting to think, okay... It's all right. We uh, we we've been one deal, we're one nil down a few times uh, before. And uh, who was the first goal? It was Timo, wasn't it? It was Timo. That was the uh, yes, that was the one. So is it? Yeah, that was the one. Johnson, tenacity of Johnson, taking on his man, winning the 50-50 balls a couple of times. Great ball into Timo Werner, and then like the first half, which was a much harder chance for Werner. He placed his shot beautifully. Debut goal for Timo Werner. Well done, man. Well done. Welcome to Tottenham Hotspur, Sam. So we levelled it, 1-1. One, one. Uh, and then the, uh, we, we uh, I think of any incidents. Uh, 
Crystal Palace continues to hold, try and hold out for a 1-1 draw now. You see, plan B. It's not really a plan, is it? It's not really a plan. Because you, you enact plan B to protect the lead. And then you enact plan B to protect the draw. It's not a plan. It's bullshit. As I say, I don't think I'll hear anyone out there in uh, football land saying that game management failed yet again. Failed by... For, Failed for so many teams against Tottenham Hotspur. Crystal Palace can join the list of Sheffield United, Luton, Bournemouth, Liverpool. All And there's another couple. I know there's six so far this season that have all tried to protect a scoreline and all failed. All failed. As Tottenham Hotspur, we played plan A right up to the whistle. It was so good to see. So we go 2-1 up. What do we do? Do we... Uh, you know, coast it, coast it, think, ah, oh, this game's in the bag. No, we are so proud, uh, not proud, that's the wrong word, so happy with the way that Tottenham Hotspur played their football right up to the whistle, right up to the whistle. So when we went 2-1 up, what's the best thing to do? Go 3-1 up. Not, not to sit back and hope that the other team doesn't penetrate you. 3-1 <laughs> up, ball through from Johnson to Sun, and uh, Werner can look at this because you know what? When you get a one-on-one -on -one with Sun, oh, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to put your uh, faith in Sun, man. Uh, people, oh, I've heard people saying that Sun was quiet and stuff like that. First half, he didn't get a chance. He, he didn't get any service really. The only service he got resulted in him hitting the post. But there we go. There's Sun up the middle, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. I mean, what, 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 what a goal, man! What a goal! that much away that much away from hitting the post and bouncing back out again but Sonny our captain delivered the goods again so as a 90 minute performance I'm pretty happy with that like, as I, like I say the first half it was just the wingers didn't quite wing they weren't bad they weren't rubbish just their their intent of getting the ball into the box wasn't quite there we looked like we had lots of ideas. Madison was very creative outside of the foot. Like his ball, I uh, saying, oh, I forgot the bloody Romero goal, didn't I? <laughs> Romero goal, we go 2-1 up, that was it. Outside of the boot, boot, boot kind of loft lob over from Madison. That's what Vision does, he's a great footballer. And Romero, man, what a precise, peachy perfect header. Just the right amount on the ball, got ahead of his man and it was 2-1 up, that's, that's what happened there. Got us, the, got us the lead and we didn't shut up shop after that. All right, get my order of events right. I've had a few hours sleep now. There's no excuse. Unsubscribe, dislike, thumbs down. Um, we played to the whistle and uh, and we take the three points. We take the three points. That doesn't affect the Dreamometer because uh, we beat Palace last year 1-0. Uh, it will affect the Pro Rider a little bit, but not an awful lot. Uh, meanwhile, our rivals, well, Liverpool uh, won in the last minute. Villa uh, got a winner in the last minute. But hey, last minute or not, it, it's not really relevant to me. The score's the score. So uh, 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 the teams ahead of us all uh, are doing well so far. Uh, but we're not slipping back. And um, uh, Ange in his press conference before said that, you know, when we had a run of games, we started building momentum. And I'm wondering if that can happen again. We've got Villa and then we've got another international break and then we've got a run till the end of the season. I'm hoping we can build up a head of steam. Um, really enjoyed that game of football. I, I was flagging a bit towards the end of the first half because uh, it was two o'clock in the morning kickoff because there was just no goals. But then the second half, I was all pepped up. Very happy. I'll be feeling 10 feet tall all week thanks to a group of blokes over the other side of the planet that I don't know. That's how crazy and delusional football is, and I bloody well love it. Until next time, folks, peace and love, peace and love, bugger game management and plan B. Admit you're wrong, folks, admit you're wrong. Say game management sucks, you don't need a plan B, you just play plan A better. Peace and love, man, come on, you spurs.